Do you ever feel sad? Of course I do, Neil. But I don't talk about it. I keep it all inside. What the fuck is that? That's so random. What the hell was that? J.K. Calloway here, jumping back into the bear. And we're on to the season one finale, episode eight. Uh, it's called Braccioli. Maybe. I, I'm sure I said that wrong. But, I mean, last episode, man, was insanity, let's just say. Set up for a very interesting finale, because, I mean, basically, they turned on... Uh, you know, pre-sales, right? They turned on that option, which we heard them talk about quite often, you know, like, uh, you know, ordering out, come pick it up kind of thing. And when they activated it, it just didn't stop. It just didn't stop. <laughs> like, and you could tell, like, they were taking, you know, inventory of how, like, hey, how are we sitting? Are we ready to go? All right, turn it on. And, oh, shit. To the point where, I mean, we've, never, we've seen Carmi pissed before. At least a, a heightened sense of urgency. We've seen that many times. We haven't seen that. Which was just straight up fucking anger. And frustration. And worry. And understand, like, understandably so. Because, holy shit, you have all, all these orders. You gotta bang them out. And you don't have enough food, you don't have enough staff, you don't have enough anything. On top of all that, uh, a review came out the day before. And the review was written by the person, just so happened to be, the person that Sydney gave her risotto to. That uh, Carmi was basically saying, like, it's not ready, you know, get rid of it. We're not ready for that yet. And she went, you know, didn't want to waste food, so she gave it to a a customer sitting out front happened to be a goddamn journalist who wrote a piece on it saying the risotto oh, has a new item. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Carmi's sitting there saying, like, yeah, don't, yeah, I know you didn't do it on purpose. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It fucked him up. It clearly fucked him up because, you know, he knows Sydney didn't try to fuck with everything. But it's, but it still happened. So by the end of the episode, Marcus is still, you know, messing with his donuts, trying to figure out the right combination of things, because he's passionate about it, which is awesome, right? But he's still just got to be working on chocolate cakes and getting those done, which he wasn't doing, right? He was still trying to, like, you know, get Carmi to look at the donuts and be like, hey, look at, look at these, they look pretty great. Meanwhile, like, we need, they needed, like, two more cakes or something like that. She just, she just wasn't doing his job, Right? So, Carmi lit into him, and he didn't, you know, the Car Marcus is not that dude. Like, he's not going to take a swing at you or anything, but don't dress him down. It's not, you know, I think there's a lot of people like that. I'm like that. I'm never going to take a swing at you or whatever if you get my face. I'm just going to leave. I'm just done. Don't do it. Like, I'm just like, oh, okay, that's how you want to treat people? That's how you want to treat me? Bye. You know, that's it. He's close. Sydney's a little closer, cause she fucked off. She like her, her and freaking uh, Richie were getting into it, you know, and like like she was lighting into Richie, but everyone was so fucking pissed off and angry to the point where she stabbed him in the ass. That I mean, that's assault, brother. You can't do that. And then at the end of the episode, she walked out. She quit. I'm hoping somehow Carmi can get her back because, I mean, she is the, the, the straw. Stirs the drink up in that place. Things started getting better when she was hired, right? Like, we, we came into the, the, the show with her. Now with Carmi. And Carmi had been there for a little bit, right? After Michael died. Maybe a few weeks. I don't, know, I don't know. But we didn't jump in with Carmi. We jumped in with Sydney. And that's when things started getting better, so... I don't know what he's going to do or how he's going to do it, but he needs to get her back. Because otherwise, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I don't know. 
Make sure you do hit like and subscribe. Somewhere down there, always appreciate that. Let us know you appreciate the channel, having fun with us. And we do do full reactions to every episode. They're up at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash JK Reacts. And every episode we do here on YouTube, we give a shout out to one of our patrons. And this week we're going to shout out Geraldine Camoin. Camoin? I'm not sure. I, I was going to get fancy and make it phonetic. It's probably just Camoin. But Geraldine, thank you so much for the support. We really do appreciate it. You just uh, joined up recently, so awesome. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if you want to hear your name shouted out, go join Patreon. Support the channel that way. Bracchioli. I'm pretty sure that's how it's said, but I'm just doubting myself all the time. But, all right. I mean, hopefully the dust has settled. We'll find out. Here we go. Berzado, and today we're going to be making beef brajal. My brother, who is addicted to painkillers, blew his head off on the State Street Bridge. Bam! No letter, no goodbye, nothing, except he did leave me our family's restaurant and his will, which was a nice curveball, considering he never let me work there with him. Oh. Yeah, I used to run the best restaurant on the planet Earth. It was pretty different for my brother's shithole, which is barely hanging on by a thread. Why would you touch that? Hey. My? <laughs> now there's a problem. I can't do this! Stop! I can't! I can't do this! I... You know we're gonna call it. I'm right here. Fuck off my ass, now! Get the fuck off! Come on, you better in this place. You better. Here. Let it rip. Let it rip. Okay, we'll see. But before I came to Al Anon, I was a cook. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still a cook. I'm just a different kind of cook, I guess. My brother and I, we would cook a lot together, especially when we were kids. You know, that's, that's when we were closest. Food was always our common ground. My brother can make you feel confident in yourself. You know, like when I was a kid, if I was nervous, I was scared, I wouldn't want to do something, he'd always tell me to just face it. But he would always say, um, let it rip. Okay. I always thought my brother was my best friend. Like, like we just knew everything about each other. I mean... Nobody knew. I didn't know my brother was using drugs. What does that say? That he hit it, well, like many do. He stopped letting me into the restaurant a couple of years ago. Well. He just cut me off cold. That just, that flicked this switch in me where I was like, okay, fuck you, watch this. And a couple of years later, this funny thing happened, which is like, for the first time in my life, I, I started to find this, uh, this station for myself. Like I was finally, I was, I was good at something that was so new and that was so exciting and I just wanted him to know that and fuck, I just wanted him to be like, good job. And I lost track of time and he died. And he left me his restaurant, trying to fix the restaurant was me trying to fix whatever was happening with my brother. Okay. We are going to be closed for dinner service tonight because we are having a bachelor party in the front. Oh, fuck that! Wow. I know, I know. It's Cicero's friends. Thank you, chef. Thank you, chefs. Okay, can we talk about Sydney at, point, at some point, please? When I was at the CIA, the, um, the Culinary Institute of America. Oh. <laughs> CIA. Yeah, thanks CIA. for clearing that up. Uh-huh. The moment the semester finished, I bought a one-way ticket to New York, and I spent every single dollar I had just eating every single place that I could think of. Really? And one of those places was the 
Best meal I ever had. Wow. This is really, really, really good. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> What's it for? I don't know. Oh. He was paying these big pieces out every month. Adds up to the amount that Cicero loaned him. You know how much I loved him, right? How much? A lot. This is a fucking disgrace right here. Oh, that's the bachelor party. I didn't know what this was. I was like, why is there a beef sign at a strip club? <laughs> I should have done more. What could you do? I don't fucking know. I never thought he was would. Yeah. You know he's so loud and obnoxious. And... What the fuck? You gotta be fucking kidding me! Ah! Ah! Oh. Uh, he might be dead. He hit his neck the wrong direction. Bad news, Richie. Hey, this is Tiff. Leave a message after the tone. I was just thinking about all that shit that went down with your dad, you know. And, uh... How I called him when I called him. Hope you guys had a good day. Give Ava a big hug. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Okay, good night. Well, I want to hear that story. Called your dad when he called him, and it was wrong. Huh. You got lucky. You get charged with aggravated assault. <sighs> oh, God, thank you, God. You're welcome, dickhead. Where'd you get the money for bail? You start a two-week parachute? He almost killed someone. Didn't mean to. Essentially breaking up a fight. Took it too far. You're all I got, cuz. Got him in. Come on, man. You can't just let him go back to work and talk to him. I'm so sorry, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Happy you're back. All right, Chef. Do you ever feel sad? Of course I do, Neil. But I don't talk about it. I keep it all inside. What the fuck is that? That's so random. What the hell was that? We've talked about this. Yo! Hey! Yo! You! Yo! Yo! Fuck! You never found it. What is this? I don't know. No acid? No acid. You mean acidity? God damn it. What? Ugh. Just soulless. The fuck is that?
Money, right? What the fuck is that? Why? Cousin! Why? Why would he do that? Why would Michael do that? Let's do it with the weirdest fucking thing ever to walk in on. Sid, quit fucking around. Grab a can opener. Family style? Two tops, boots? Danish design. Tasting menu at the bar. Okay. Okay. What do you call it? The bear. KBL. KBL was on the bottom of that can. Everyone's just cool. Like... No! What the, what the fuck? Explain! This is not okay! Okay, so, like... What was the... Why? Why would he do that? Why would he... Like, we saw the list of just fuck tons of money. And he said it lined up with what he was borrowing from Cicero. Right? So what? He was just putting it in cans of crushed tomatoes? So that one day Carmi would find it? And then what? What? Like, what, what, what was the point? Are you just trying to rip off Cicero? Because Cicero's gonna find the fuck out that this happened, that all of his money. Like, what was he gonna like, go, go to Carmi and be like, oh, did you win the fucking lottery? No, he didn't win the fucking lottery. Are you paying back, Cicero? There's so many questions. He just puts a note saying, let her rip. At, with the restaurant, I'm assuming. With the money in the tomatoes. Like, I am so confused. Oh, I want an explanation. I hope we get one. You know, at the beginning of next season or something. Because, I, like, what, what, why would you just not use that money to improve the restaurant? If you were burnt with the restaurant, and you didn't want it anymore? Because this makes me, it makes it seem like his suicide, like he, like that was his note. Right? Take all this money from Cicero. Which, by the way, you're still going to have to pay back. Leave it in tomato cans so that Carmi and essentially Richie, right? And, and to an extent, I'm sure Sugar can do something with the money. But, like, it's still, it's still debt. It doesn't get wiped away because you die. It's... You know, still there until it gets paid off. Still, wants to, you know, it's not like I don't know, man, because that makes it feel like what I don't like about it is it makes it feel like Michael's suicide was very much, you know, planned. You know, and like I get that you know if he was addicted to painkillers, then he was in constant pain right I, like I, I, don't, I don't think i don't remember if they ever said you know why you know or if he had an injury or something like that and start like because that's what most of those addictions start with is like just literally pain relief right but this feels this makes it feel like okay he was constantly taking out loans from cicero 300 grand total I don't know if that's the total total but I think it said 330 on that piece of paper but if that's the case it's clearly in chunks so it took time I don't know I want an explanation because I, I, that doesn't sit right with me 
And now everything's hunky dory. They made a big pot of spaghetti, and everyone's getting down and having a good time because oh, we've got this windfall. Bitch, it's not your money. It's Cicero's money that's gotta get paid back. You're sitting there making plans, you know, to to shut down the beef and open up the bear or whatever, and <laughs> it's not your money. What do you think's gonna happen when Cicero comes by? Cause he's gonna. And he'd be like, oh, look at all this new shit. You rebranded the fucking restaurant. Now you've got different sections for different meals and like whatever they were talking about. It's like... It's just, so we're just going to smile and be like, okay, well played. No! He's not! I'm so very confused by that. And hopefully it'll be cleared up quickly and painlessly when we start season two next week because genuinely it doesn't make any sense to me why would you hide the money in tomato cans so that Cicero won't find it like he's gonna eventually figure it out there's no hiding that and also you just made all of your employees accomplices to embezzling <laughs> There's a lot going on there. So, I, I hope we get explanations. But it seems like, you know, everyone's back on board. You know, like, and, and, and that's the thing. Carmi definitely wanted to, uh, you know, expand the fucking menu. For sure. Financially, he couldn't do it, you know. Now he can. So he's going to be a delight to work with, hopefully. But I just, it's like... I, I don't know. That doesn't sit right with me. That doesn't sit right with me. Thank you guys for watching. Comments. Let me know what I'm missing here. Because I'm clearly missing something, right? Like, because it's not like... Uh, uh, I don't know. It's clearly... Like, he said... He said... Looking at that... You know... The list of money... That he took from Cicero with the, the little letters that were on the bottom of the cans, you know, it matched up with the loans he took from Cicero, right? So, uh, like, when's Cicero gonna come break some legs? Because it's coming. <laughs> you can pump that money right back into the restaurant and relaunch and all that shit. Does it matter? Fuck no. I don't know. I'm excited for season two. I've heard it's outstanding. I hope they explain everything. Um, because if it's simple as he was ripping off Cicero to, you know, let Carmi live out his dream with the restaurant he always wanted to work in, that's great. <laughs> but there's a big old asterisk there that's waiting to get a bat crushed across its head. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you. Please comment and let me know what I'm missing here. Unless it's a spoiler. If, it, if they do pop up in Season 2 with an explanation, then don't bother telling me. I'll find out soon. But for now, <laughs> Season 2 starting next week. We'll talk to you then.